This episode is going to be all about community and biodiversity, exploring how to support local farms and vendors, how food can be used as a tool to uplift one another in your community in trying times, and how to incorporate new and different ingredients into your diet. Today I have the pleasure of cooking with Chef Casey Baker, the chef de cuisine at l'atelier de Joël Robuchon, the two Michelin star French eatery in New York. Chef Casey is also the founder of Dine-In, a meal delivery service founded during COVID designed to give back to the Hudson Valley community with goals of becoming a food education platform in the future. So joining us virtually today is Chef Casey Baker. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited to cook up this meal with you. Can you talk a little bit about what we'll be preparing today? So today we're going to be focusing mainly on artichokes. We're going to do artichokes pretty much like three ways. So today we're going to be making this recipe with farmed guinea hen, baby artichokes, some bacon, some Norwich Meadow Farms onions, carrots, some white wine, just some lemons and some butter. We actually sourced a lot of these ingredients from Norwich Meadows Farm, which is an organic farm in upstate New York run by Zaid Curdier and his wife Haifa. Sourced those ingredients locally at Tompkins Square Market. What is going to be the first step for this artichoke recipe? The first step is going to be cleaning the artichokes. Start with the artichoke with the stem facing your palm and you just start picking off the small leaves on the stem and working your way up to the larger leaves. So as you get up to the larger leaves, you're going to notice that they turn from green to yellow. So once you hit that step, you're going to take your artichoke, put it on your cutting board with your chef's knife and just cut the remaining green part off. So you're gonna be taking the paring knife, cutting the oxidized tip off, and then just slicing down towards the heart of the artichoke, just taking off the dark green areas, trying not to remove any of the heart. And this is called turning artichokes. So once your artichoke is turned, you're gonna put it in your lemon water to uh, stop the oxidation. This serves how many people and how many artichokes do we need? I would say eight artichokes are good for four people. So this is a meal that you should be having with friends, basically. It is a fun one to do with friends because you'll definitely need help cleaning the artichokes. <laughs> Invite your friends over for dinner and then hand them a case of artichokes to clean. So when is peak season for artichokes typically? Peak season for baby artichokes probably be late August, uh, early fall. So why do you think people usually find artichokes like a difficult ingredient to cook with? They could be intimidating to cook. I would say most of the product is inedible. Uh, this recipe is designed to use even the scraps. Uh, we'll be making the broth for this dish with all of the leaves from the artichoke. In a pot, I'm just adding a little bit of butter. And I'm gonna start rendering off some sliced bacon. I'm gonna add some of our onions and carrots. Just let that sweat. And all of the artichoke trim. I'm gonna add that right to the pot. And some dry white wine. So once the artichoke leaves begin to soften, I take some of our uh, guinea hen broth that I made with the rest of the animal. So I add our guinea hen broth, just enough to cover our artichoke leaves and bring it to a boil. Then I take it off the heat and let it infuse with the artichoke leaves. So the next step is gonna be to cook your artichokes. So in a pot, you're gonna add enough water. The artichokes are gonna float, but you want them to kind of be covered. You're gonna take your thyme, about a tablespoon of turmeric powder, about three tablespoons of salt. So you're gonna bring it up to a boil and then reduce it to a simmer once it's at a boil. While this water's boiling, what was your inspiration behind creating Dine-In? And what did Dine-In do exactly? When everything shut down, it was easier for me just to move back upstate for the time being. Uh, and I was just sitting there watching the news, wondering how I can use my skills to do something positive in the community. So I thought maybe to do a kind of local Blue Apron type service where I would work directly with the farmers and develop the rest myself. And then people can order based on the, that weekly menu and all of the steps were included. So it was like a educational, fun, kind of family oriented thing. 20% of the proceeds would go directly to the Food Bank of Hudson Valley. We did some work with a women's group in the Bronx because I was able to bring it down into the city with the help from some of my old line cooks. 
In the meantime, we can prep the green almonds. So I've never had the pleasure of having green almonds before, which I'm excited about. Where do you typically get your green almonds from and when are they usually in season? So these green almonds I actually got back in May. They're a very good, like kind of late spring product and I comb feed a bunch of them. So to do that, all I did was covered the green almonds in olive oil and slowly simmered them until tender with some Thai chili, coriander, some black pepper, and some thyme. So what we're gonna do is pull them out of the oil, and then with a knife, you're just gonna thinly slice pretty much as thin as you can get it. So I think that my artichokes are actually done. So what do we do with them now? Just put the flat side down on the cutting board with a knife, just gently cut it in half. The key to doing this once they're cooked is just kind of using the whole knife instead of coming down flat. You want to come down in like a smooth slice. And I cut them into quarters. So after we prep the artichokes, what's the next step? The next step would be moving on to our guinea hen. While we were prepping everything, we actually had the oven preheating at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So just make sure that while you're prepping everything that that's heating up. So to your saute pan, you could set it on high heat and add your oil. So I'm just gonna season my guinea hen breasts with salt and pepper. Uh, pepper only on the non-skin side. I have never actually cooked with guinea hen before, but I found out that they're actually a natural pest control on organic farms. So what made you decide to choose guinea hen for this recipe? How does it complement all the other ingredients? Or should I say, how do all the other ingredients complement the guinea hen? I chose guinea hen for this just to highlight an ingredient that isn't normally used. Just tell how much uh, leaner it is and smaller uh, it is then a uh, chicken full of hormones and what you're normally used to seeing at the supermarket, like this much smaller, leaner bird. So it's seasoned, salt on both sides, pepper on the skinless side. So we're yeah. good to go. Yeah, so you're gonna go skin side down first. So once you add it to the pan, you're just gonna gently press from the middle with your tongs. Uh, and that will release any uh, little air pockets. And that's a little tip to get the crispy skin, like uniform. So you're gonna leave that on medium heat. Uh, you can pick it up and check on it uh, in about two minutes. And once it's a light golden brown, you're gonna put it in your 400 degree oven for about eight minutes. Obviously you work in one of the top restaurants in New York City. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in cuisine moving towards you know, more healthy and environmentally friendly foods as well. More plant-based dishes and uh, dietary restriction friendly dishes. Uh, I mean, if you look at 11 Madison Park, number one restaurant in the world goes vegan. I think that that's gonna have an impact on what all the other restaurants do. I also think uh, we're gonna see a change in how restaurant workers demand to be treated. I think that line cooks are going to be a little bit more demanding. They should know their worth. I think we'll see some changes in just how the overall back of house workforce uh, expects to be treated. Is your broth uh, simmering? Yeah, it's simmering. You can take your miso butter. So I use this to season the broth. Once that's in there, you're just going to adjust the seasoning with a little bit of salt and pepper. I tend to go a little heavy, so I won't tell you how much I put in. Uh, that's a trade secret. We're going to add our uh, quartered artichokes back into our broth to rewarm them while the guinea hen is resting. So while our guinea hen is resting and our artichokes are warming up, we can chiffon out our sorrel. This uh, red vein sorrel that we got from Zaid at Norwich Meadows. Have you ever chiffon out anything before? No, I've, I have never chiffon out anything before, but I'm excited to learn. Just uh, lay them right on top of each other like a neat little stack. Uh -huh. And then you just take uh, one end from the horizontal side and roll it up like a burrito. So you have this oh, little, okay. little roll up here. And then pretty much as thin as you can get it, you just cut. I like to lead with my uh, knuckles. Now we're all ready to uh, make our plate. I uh, sent you crispy artichokes which uh, I fry in larger batches. Do that by slicing the cleaned artichokes on a mandolin, starting them in cold olive oil and bringing them up to uh, fry in the cold olive oil. That tastes really good. 
I'm assuming we'll need a little bit like of a bold plate for this dish, right? So first I like to cut the uh, guinea hen. I lay it horizontal on my board and just cut kind of a V shape. Ooh, it is really nice and crispy when I hit my, my knife hit it. I heard that nice little crunch. So I just stagger the pieces slightly to give some blank space between them, but still in the same kind of order, if that makes sense. Take my artichokes out and I take a few spoonfuls of the broth. So now I just kind of make it look pretty with our garnishes. This looks really good. I think we did a pretty good job. Thank you so much, Casey, for cooking this with us, for cooking up change. I'm really excited for everyone watching to go and try their own guinea hen and artichoke recipe. Yeah, no problem. It was fun to be on and show this. Uh, I think it is a little, like when you list it out on paper, it can be a little intimidating because it has like every different type of way to cook. But at the end of the day, it, it's really not that hard to put together and it's a pretty good batch uh, dish that you can make at home for, like uh, to make one plate is not that much harder than making four. So for more cooking videos with other top chefs, make sure you like and subscribe to Chefs for Impact. You can follow us on Instagram at Chefs for Impact and also on YouTube. And don't forget to follow Chef Casey on Instagram too for more food inspiration. We're excited to bring you guys more recipes with other top chefs, linking sustainability, cuisine, and local community resources as well. So stay tuned for that.